I'm not entirely sure how to feel about this album right now. I kind of love it, but at times don't. It's a real mashup of brilliant choices, provocative topics, but odd decisions or productions and sound. Hello and welcome back. You're with me. I see snap. Tyler, the creator, rapper, producer, fashion designer, and probably way, way more. If you are watching this, you probably know way more than I do on him anyway. This is his first album in three years, I believe, making a total of seven studio albums. Tyler initially found attention as a founding member of the alternative hip hop group Odd Future. That is until his first debut album, Goblin in 2011, which kind of gained him like a bit of a cult following. Over the years, Tyler's sound and style has evolved into something more refined, blending hip hop, soul, jazz, R&B, you name it. Albums like Flower Boy in 2017 or Igor in 2019 demonstrated his growth musically and personally, with Igor even winning him a Grammy. And then of course the album Call Me If You Get Lost, that once again shows Tyler maturing with a fun album that goes in a lot of quirky directions I would say. So here we are with Chroma Copia. The theme and title seem slightly vague, even up for debate. As far as I know, Chroma Copia is a made up word by Tyler but we can assume chroma refers to the purity of color, breaking free of the restraints from white and gray. <laughs> Make of that what you will. I mentioned earlier that I love it, but kind of don't at the same time. And I think this is kind of obvious in the opener, Saint Chroma, featuring Daniel Caesar. Initially, I actually thought this was a pretty strong start to the album. For context, I actually haven't listened to any of the singles, so I'm going in this pretty much listening to the whole thing as is. Right away, there's some really great production techniques on display. Tyler's music always kind of pushes those boundaries, and I appreciate his boldness in production. That stomping percussion makes it feel like you're in the middle of a crowd all stomping around you. The atmosphere is quite intense, and I love that. And then Tyler just sort of like comes up and starts whispering in your ear, really making for a narrative feel and like you're really aware of where you are. Then there's this little wailing voice that comes in sporadically, reminding me of the Swamp Boss or Dolwa from Majora's Mask. But here is where it starts to lose me a bit. It all starts to feel slightly muddy with a synthy bass melody and the vocal harmonies. And then it completely wins me back at the two minute mark with this awesome kind of grainy gritty bass that kicks in. Then we have Daniel Caesar's voice that kind of beautifully sings you out. I think the opener is a good example of the hate and love. And what I mean is this album's sudden changes. For instance, I killed you halfway through shifts from this chaotic industrial vibe to something a bit more like dreamy R&B. And honestly, I didn't quite vibe with that change. It's not necessarily bad. I just find it slightly jarring. And I know he's done that before, but I don't know, somehow here it doesn't sound as impressive, you know? If it weren't for that constant percussion that you hear throughout the song, they could be two totally different songs. Despite that though, the album overall stays pretty consistent. There are a few moments here and there that pull me in and out, but it's quite far and few between. But on top of that, there's quite a lot of good tracks that I love, like Tomorrow, which is introspective. It's chill with these really nice strings and guitar, or Ratata, which is gritty and quite industrial. Mirroring the lyrics, that doesn't sound right to me, mirroring. Mirroring the lyrics that I interpret to be kind of confidence mixed with paranoia, becoming more distrustful the more successful you get. Or Darling Eye featuring Tizo Touchdown, who I quite enjoy. It has that kind of drop it like a top vibe with the but I feel like they kind of own it, making it unique to that song. Touching back on one of the singles that were released, Noid, I actually enjoy the beginning of this with the punchy, electrifying guitar. Then you have these minimalist drums, which creates this real like uneasy feeling. Like you're expecting something to happen, but it doesn't quite. Tyler's vocal and this sine wave that gradually increases adds this like layer of anxiety to it. However, the suspense fades when the mood shifts to something more chill and a bit more funky. Saying that though, it does grow on me with each listen as the high pitched sounds in the background subtly suggest lingering paranoia. Then we get to hate 
Jane, which feels kind of honest. Lyrics about having a kid not being ready at all. The selfish pull of wanting to keep your freedom of a child free life. Instrumentally though, I found it slightly underwhelming. Apart from the abrupt snare roll that kind of jolted me awake. Compared to other tracks, it lacks that same impact as something like Judge Judy. There's this detuned synth melody, steel guitar strums, and as the song goes on, it becomes even more sonically pleasing. The instrument's timbres feel dynamic and really, really wide, and this sweet arpeggiator that plays near the end blends beautifully with the synths and like vocal textures, reaching the album's last half with Sticky, featuring Glorilla, Sexy Red, and Lil Wayne. It sounds pretty decent overall, actually. The mix, though, for me is slightly muddled in parts, especially in the high and mid ranges, following this with Take Your Mask Off, again featuring Daniel Caesar and Latoya Williams. It feels more intimate and a little laid back with these subtle pulsating keys and lo-fi beats. Daniel Caesar's voice provides a bit of a striking contrast to Tyler's, which kind of fits well with the lyrics about societal masks, whether you're with friends, work, school, whatever. Even with sexuality and identity, feeling like you have to hide or pretend. In the second half, most of the features stand out in their own unique way. Thought I Was Dead featuring Schoolboy Q and Santa Gold, a name which I haven't heard in a while. It has this raw marching band sort of rhythm to it, kind of reminding me of Flower Boy or Goblin at this point. Santa Gold's backing vocals kind of break up the harshness of Tyler's voice and all the instruments. The only thing is the instrumentation does feel slightly repetitive, the smallest nitpick, but yeah, something I noticed on that song. And I don't know, it stands out weirdly more for me. Don't know why. In contrast though, we have Balloon featuring Dochi. It has this weird, sweet, nostalgic sound to it, like an 80s infomercial or something. Dochi's vocals here really, really suit this aesthetic and I think they work really well. As we approach the final track, we have Like Him featuring Lola Young. I enjoyed her latest album and I reviewed it, so check out if you want, but it is really nice to hear her here on this album. The production starts minimally, seemingly building up as Tyler's own emotions seem to intensify intensify. While singing about his father, I believe, I think Young's vocals adds this really nice depth to it. Though the mid-track changes feel slightly jarring, but I actually quite like the change. Then you have his mum's voice coming in right at the end, which feels so personal. I don't know if I personally would have added something like this, but brave of him to do it, so fair play. Finally, we come to Hope You Find Your Way Home. A pretty decent track to end the album on. It has this neo-retro Vangelis style synth going through it that I quite love, but it feels simple compared to the rest of the album, which isn't a bad thing per se. Tyler's lyrics again introspectively focus on doubts of being a father. More nuanced sort of vulnerable perspective compared to his usual bravado I guess. Overall Chromacopia isn't quite as ambitious as his previous albums but it's still pretty damn good. I think Tyler's taking risks thematically and lyrically and just like emotionally in this album. There's moments of like brilliance, emotional depth and creative production choices. Even if the album's tonal shifts sometimes feel disjointed, I don't think it ruins the overall feel of the album. It's an album that I think will challenge listeners, taking us on a journey through Tyler's growth and self-reflection. I think whether you love it or hate it, Chromacopia is gonna keep you interested. And you know, that's kind of worth something. So. All in all, I think I would give this album an 8 out of 10. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed my review. Feel free to leave a comment, subscribe, whatever you like. And yeah, again, thank you so much for watching and hopefully catch you on the next one. Goodbye.